What's up, everybody? Welcome to the off season. Officially. Hey, first day of a new year. Yes. Happy uh, New Year, Andrew. <laughs> Happy New Year. This is the Bronx Pinstripe Show, the first official episode post-2023 season. It's October 3rd. The Yankees are not going to be playing another baseball game until 2024. That's unusual for, for us in, in doing this podcast. But really, the Yankees have not played a meaningful baseball game in some time. So I, we were texting on Sunday about when we were going to record. We're like, yeah, let's do it Tuesday. Let's let the dust settle on a on the season, I guess, maybe some news will come out. Maybe we'll, we'll have that press conference or at least the scheduling yeah, of that. You press were right. Conference. It's not happening. I mean, it's crickets, right? So I think yeah. I said next week, next, next Tuesday or Wednesday. Yeah, You is... said a week you, 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 you got it correct. I, I want, I want answers right now. <laughs> yeah. Kind of have them already to be honest yeah, without that... the press conference, but yeah, <laughs> unfortunately, but we were texting on Sunday. I was like, well, I'm about to go apple picking and uh, <laughs> it's Sunday in the middle of NFL football. The Patriots are going to about to play the Cowboys and I'm about to leave for apple picking. It's a good thing. I missed that game because a oh boy, do the Patriots stink. Uh, but the apple picking was originally scheduled for Saturday morning and we, we got rained out, but mm. when we scheduled it, I was like, yeah, fine. That weekend is free and clear because you know why the Yankees are not going to be contending for the playoffs. So I do not have to worry about, oh, I need to watch this game on the weekend because they might be fighting for a wild card spot. Nope. Big fat. Nope. But this apple picking, Scott, have you done, where'd you go? Demarest well, farms. Have you been to Demarest farms in Jersey? Yeah. yeah, I have a long time ago. Jesus Christ. Everybody in the state of New Jersey was there. I'm convinced that's how packed it was. $80 for, for apple picking. Wait, 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 wait. $80 for, for, for three what? people for apple for picking. What? You pay per person? It was 80 or you pay I'll, you you pay for like the the All I know wait? All I know is we bought tickets and it cost me $80 uh -huh. and the tickets got you three passes for apple picking and three pumpkins and it cost 80 goddamn dollars. And well, you you throw in the pumpkin. Oh yeah, pumpkins. Any, any size pumpkin? They're good size pumpkins. I got to tell you, you're getting down to like not that bad of a price when you when you when you work it out. If you it, are you able to pick as many apples as you want? A bag's worth. A bag's worth of apples. So three bags worth of apples. One bag of apples. One bag of apples. <laughs> <laughs> three pumpkins okay yeah the unit but, price is going up but but i 80 dollars. i would have paid 800 dollars if i did not have to sit through the torture that was trying to park at demaris farms yeah we get within a mile of this place and we're sitting in traffic i'm not i'm not exaggerating it was mm -hmm. like almost a mile of traffic to park for a 330 apple picking appointment we didn't park until 4 45 it took us almost a full like hour and 15 minutes to just park. You're weaving through this dirt parking lot and it had rained like the no previous nine days. So even though it was nice on Sunday, it was still muddy as shit. Cars and people were just everywhere. It was filthy. And you're just waiting. There's one lane to get in and out. So they have to hold people to let people leave the parking lot. And then they have to hold people leaving to get people into the parking lot. So it's just a complete clusterfuck. And by the time we parked, no one wanted to be there. Harrison was freaking out because he's been sitting in the car a long time and he's seeing pumpkins and apples. He just wants to get out of the car and run around. Lucy, yeah. who we decided to bring, she's only three, three months old, needs to be fed. So Leanne's climbing in the back seat, jamming mm -hmm. herself between two car seats, trying to feed a newborn or not newborn, three month old. I'm sitting in the front seat trying to frantically check the score of the Patriots Cowboys game. And I can't get it because there's no goddamn service at Demarest Farms. Well, that doesn't make any sense. You need it to was, go to uh, your, your thought about instead of going to Demarest, go, go a little further north to Warwick, apple orchards, okay. lots of apple well, orchards. I'm never doing that again. So yeah, Warwick, Demarest, freaking Alabama. I'm not doing apple picking anymore. Yeah. Um, sound, sounds like a, sounds like a shit show. Sounds like a shit show. It was the apples are good though. <laughs> yeah. Until for like a week and then they all go bad. Because you're like, oh, I can't eat this many apples. Well, you That's only have true. one bag, so you're fine. No, there's still like 19 apples. Like We're not getting through these. Make an apple pie. Cool. All right. Well, you know, that's an adventure. Mm -hmm. um, trying to think if I have any good kid stuff. Oh, yeah. I pulled a, I pulled like a mountain uh, of, of earwax out of Kemp's. Kemp's like, I can't hear anything. Like, why can't you hear anything? And of course, me being a doctor, I have a little, little thing that has a, a microscopic camera. And it's like a, it's like a, it's like a Q-tip, but it's got like a point on it. It's got does like a little, the, does the it's picture, got a little scooper. Does the camera go to your phone? Oh yeah. It goes to your phone 
and you can take pictures of it. I have a picture of it. Actually, I have a picture of what this disgusting this is. And so it's, it's actually really addicting and Kemp like kind of loves it. He, he's like that, get the ear thing <laughs> because he knows that when I do this, he can hear again. It's like a miracle. Like I'm giving him hearing the, the, the ability to hear. So I feel like it's a little bit of a God a miracle complex. Worker. Yeah, yeah. Yeah. You know, as, as, uh, as, as any parent wants to feel like that, that's a good feeling. And I swear to God, it's like, it's like pulling out, uh, creamy peanut butter. It's, 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 it is, I'm not exaggerating with how much is in there either. It's like a scoop and it's got, this thing's got like a little silicone booty that goes on the, on the end of it. Okay. Uh, and it's got like multiple little tools. It's pretty awesome. You can get them on Amazon. They're like 20 bucks. And, uh, yeah. And you can see everything, but yes, he was, he couldn't hear this morning. And then when he left for school, he could hear. So, so yeah, the, the kid's ears is, is a weird thing because like, you can't, like, you know, man, is he's at the point now where he can like, he can blow his nose and everything, right? Like he's, he's, I mean, not well, honestly. Yeah. Cause like the kids in their sinuses, like Harrison, we had to get the ear tubes because like he was just constantly congested and they can't like get anything out. So yeah, that between the earwax ear tubes the ear infections the, the snots it's just yeah you can show it's us not this good. picture I'm, I'm trying to find the picture because i didn't get this the one from this last time i have uh I have... do you do you do you watch those like i don't but like i know people who like to get off on those instagram videos of like the earwax coming out or like the the pimple popping oh and stuff, no like... no no that's disgusting because that's, well, that's, that's what if it's that's something that sounds like well this is different it's like yeah, I guess. I guess it's it's different cuz it's my kid, you know. Yeah. <laughs> if, if it's if I'm watching someone else do this, I'm 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 throwing up all over the all over the monitor. What if what if people tune into this episode like and we just never talk about the Yankees. We just talk about this crap the entire time. 45 minutes of this. You think people would enjoy that? Yeah, probably. It's it's more enjoyable than than what we're Well, while you try and find that about. picture, what we're going to do is talk about a couple of uh news items uh from I guess the last weekend of the year. Let's start Logan with that Aaron judge clip. I believe this was an interview either Saturday before the game or Sunday before the game. Um, it's just Aaron judge talking about 2024. You know, we can we can talk about injuries, we can talk about missed opportunities, but I think it comes down to us as players, you know, not showing up when we needed to, you know, I go back to beginning of the year, you know, the Rays in our division ran off like 12, 13 straight. You know, we were winning series, but we weren't finishing off teams, you know, teams that we should be sweeping and beating. It we just really couldn't get that last final game against them. So I think it's just really the urgency out of spring training to really start off hot, especially when you play in the in the AL East. You got to you got to bring it every single day and, you know, starting on that first series. Why do you think there was, uh, I guess, a lack of urgency and how do you make sure that's not an issue next year? Say the manager. Yeah, Do it. it. Say the manager. Won't be an issue next year. Um, you know, I'm not. I'm not too sure. I'm not too sure. There's a couple of things that can kind of go into it, but I'm not going to. It's tough to say. You know, I just think guys, like I said, we just didn't come out with a sense of urgency. When you look at some of the things that have happened throughout the course of this season. Do you, do you have conversations with Brian Cashman, with Hal Steinbrenner, with the decision makers about what you would like to see change? Yeah, I've been talking with Hal all year. You know, I talk with, with Cash throughout the season as well. And, you know, I'm looking forward to talking to both those guys and just kind of giving my opinion. You know, it doesn't mean, you know, the things, my opinions will change things, but I think just getting a chance to voice some of the opinions and voice of the players, you know, what we're feeling down here, what we're seeing down here. You know, I think it's just a good conversation to have to kind of bring us all together, you know, kind of get everybody on the same page. And I think if we get everybody on the same page, we're going to be be good moving forward. Do you think there has been a little bit of a disconnect between the players and, and maybe the front office? You know, at times Long there's probably pause. disagreements, you know, but I think disagreements are good. But as long as we can, well, once we disagree, I think it's best we kind of both look each other in the eye and kind of come to some common ground. And I think... You know, the next couple of years as we move forward, we're going to we're going to be right there, you know, and you know, this is a tough year this year. But, you know, ultimately it comes down to us on the field. It comes down to us playing the game every single night. And, you know, we just didn't show up. And, you know, I take full responsibility as that as, you know, one of the guys down here, one of the leaders of the team. And, you know, we'll we'll, we'll get that figured out for next year. 
So, you know, he, a, he does long yeah. pauses just normally. Like, he does the Jeter, I'm going to yeah. think about it, and then talk. But those were, how do I say this without putting my foot in my mouth, <laughs> yeah. long pauses. Those were different long pauses. Yep. Yeah. And yet he's still being very outgoing and saying, and I don't know if this is just posturing, but, you know, supporting the manager, supporting the, you know, the things that are happening behind the scenes. But there's, it's very clear that he's got specific things that are on his mind. Yeah, and he he didn't say them explicitly, right? Like when Meredith asked him, why do you think there was not a lack of urgency? He kind of fumbled around and said, you know, there's a lot of different things, blah, blah, blah. He never really gave a clear answer. And I, again, I, I was joking, just say the manager, because I, I think that is definitely a factor. I never expected him to, to call out the manager or the coaching staff. But like, if we look at the the Yankees record in the start of the season, they, they went basically 15 and 14 in the first month of the season. They played one game in March. They won that game and they went 14 and 14 in April. They had a great May 19 and 10, but then they were below, uh, or, uh, yeah, below 500 June. And then we know what happened from there on out. Um, and the lack of urgency, this is the, this is not the first time take last first half, the 2022 first half, call that the exception to the rule. Because every single season under Aaron Boone, the Yankees – oh, god damn it. You're showing the earwax thing. I don't even – that, that – we need to, like, blur that out on YouTube or something. I don't even know what I'm looking at. Like, that looks like some sort of There's alien the end probe. of a scalpel, basically. Get it out of my face. And Get it out. out of my face. Every single year under Aaron Boone, starting with 2018, this team has come out with no sense of urgency. Like their shit doesn't stink. And like, oh, we're just gonna we're just gonna roll out of bed. We're gonna roll out of spring training and take it easy, and we're gonna figure it out at some point throughout the There's season. There's 19 playoff spots. We're gonna get one of them, and then we'll get into the tournament and figure it out. And that's why last season, 2022, we were all so shocked at how well the team played in the first half of the season. And we've come to learn that was not the true. Yankees. That was a fluke. I don't know how but it was, was an entire what, three months of fluke. What the hell was I don't that? Know. I don't know. I, I the, the stars are lined. They, they find needle in a haystack. Whatever you want to call it, that was a fluke. And I think it's very obvious that was a fluke because every single season under Aaron Boone, the Yankees have come out flat. And they were basically 500 to start this season. And Aaron, and Aaron Judge, like he just said, it, the Rays are rattling off win after win, so you're falling behind. You've got the Orioles, who surprised the world and had a fantastic season. Other teams, we knew this was going to be a tough division, at, at the very least, a tough, like, just everyone's going to be competing for, for a playoff spot. Like, that was a realistic possibility, and the Yankees come out. 500 in the, in the first month of the season and that didn't bury them what buried them was a, an awful middle of the season pretty much august buried them but it did put them behind an eight ball and what and what judge says about yeah it's on us it's on the players on the field they have to perform better yes obviously we're going to go through some numbers like carlos Renon can't have a 6.8 era next year john carlos stanton can't hit 189 next year like we, we know all of that but the fact of the matter is for six seasons now this team has not reached its potential under this coaching staff and it seems like we're just gonna run it back next year with the exact same coaching staff because sean casey is sitting there this weekend being like, oh, i was asked to come back next year oh by boone, really by boone and cashman yeah and then yeah so you get you get something like that you get comments like that 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 uh casey obviously said when he wasn't supposed to say uh, that he was invited back and he's got to think about, you know, what his plan is. Got to talk to the family and all that. That means Cashman and Boone are safe. That's exactly what that means, right? They're, you're, you're, Cashman and Boone are, are not part of the internal audit, not part of the, the, uh, the, the, the fact that they have to look around and find out what's going on. They're no, they're going to look at the hot, do the hot dog vendors and the, and the parking attendants to make yeah, sure they look at process, yeah. not the people. It's not the people. It's the process of, of who's implementing, uh, you know, this, or what, what they're, what they're actually implementing. It's not the people that chose the process. It's the process that chose itself. We just got to make sure we change that from other people that don't work here. We got to have them come in and change it so that the people that are inept to run it, uh, before can do that again. So yeah, the fact that 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 leaked out by the by the guy who was invited back all but says that that Aaron Boone is coming back and all but says that Brian Cashman is coming back. And I think we all knew that Brian Cashman was coming back, but there was a little glimmer of hope that maybe maybe they would make a change uh, at the at the manager level. But it you know, I I I know that those were pipe dreams kind of in the back of my head. 
I, I know what the right move is and I know what, what the move was going to be. And this is, uh, this is kind of cementing that and it's really frustrating. Well, the thing that makes it extra frustrating is like you said, Hal's talking about how this is such a disappointing season and they're going to evaluate everything in the off season. Apparently that does not include the coaching staff because the decision was made already before the season even ended. The coaching staff is fine. Boone is part of the solution, not the problem as Andy Martino has put, has reported a couple of different times. That's how the Yankees front office feels. Boone is part of the solution. So no, you're, you're just posturing Hal Steinbrenner. You're just saying what you think the public wants to hear that you're going to evaluate everything process. And maybe they will evaluate process and the training staff might be overhauled or the analytics department might be overhauled. Great. That's all great. And I want that to happen, but you're still going to go into the season with the same coaching staff that has not been able to get this team's potential, reach this team's potential. And that is a problem. And so whether you change the, the analytics changes, the training staff changes, those are all medium term to long term changes. You don't change an analytics department in November and then get the fruits of that change in April of next year. Like that takes time to, to work its way through the system, because guess what? This team has been operating for six, seven, eight years throughout the minor league system in one way. You can't snap your fingers and change that. That needs to be bled out of the organization that takes time to get out of the organization we're still it, stuck with a minor league system that believes hitters versus pitcher is about hitting the ball 95 miles an hour and walking not about having a competitive at bat putting bat on ball and getting on base any way you can or moving a runner if you need to or hitting a sack fly if you need to because sometimes the game comes down to you've got a runner on third base in the eighth inning and you're down by a run and you just need a sack fly to tie the game and things like that. And that has just been completely lost on this organization for almost a decade. You can't change an analytics department in November of 2023 and expect in April of 2024 for that entire method and methodology of an organization to be changed because it's not. It's going to take years and years to change. The the other thing, too, is that like to speak to how fast or slow a change can can happen, if you're going out and willing to spend dollars you can you can institute a change like this quicker on the major league level. You can you can do that. You can you can do that if you are committing to going into free agency or going into a trade market and and trying to affect your team in the short term via outside players. The problem is is that the 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 free agent market this year isn't the greatest. It's it's not a massive crop of of uh, of players that can come in and help the New York Yankees right now, uh, where there are opportunities to help them and then the the other piece is that you have to go out and and find you know available trades but you don't have a, a ton to trade you don't have no. you don't have a system that that is so chock full of of talent that that it's you know oozing out of your system that you can go out and make make these trades that will affect your team in a particular way so it's going to be very difficult and this goes back to conversations um that uh th that i was having with uh with with some of the folks they were talking about you know you, the change is going to come from inside it's going to come from the minor leagues like that's that's the belief the belief is that it's going to come from uh inside for for the most part and what's on that roster and to me like you can't do very much with that you can't do very much with that so yes this is a long-term change and when you have the same voices that are coming out and talking about the process and talking about the you know how you're hitting and how you're pitching and how you're getting ready for a game and how you're creating this sense of urgency the voice doesn't change and and sometimes you just need that voice to change just to mm -hmm. be a different voice to to implement these things in a different way just to get a little bit out of it and when when i hear that the the captain of the new york yankees is is talking about a, a lack of urgency a lot of a sense of urgency from the team. To me, that's a direct reflection on the manager, a direct reflection on the manager. And now he's getting this team prepared for the games and the season. That That is exactly what that leads. So, so when out of one side of the mouth, he's like, yep, love Aaron Boone, great communicator. Other side of the mouth, we have a lack of urgency. I, I don't know how you say both things. You, you can't say both things because the manager and the coaching staff needs to have this team ready to go with that sense of urgency and needs to instill that sense of urgency from day one. And, and clearly and he hasn't done that for, for a, a while since he's been, since he was hired the, whether it's Aaron Boone or 
some other manager or you or me managing the team next year, of course I understand that the players need to play better in order for this team to have a better record. Like that's obvious. <clears throat> but if you look at this roster, like it's getting to the point where what are we banking? Who are we banking on being so much better next year that it's going to make a world of difference, right? Like Aaron Judge being healthy for a full season should make a, a great difference. Awesome. Understand that. But what is Giancarlo Stanton going to be next year? What is DJ LeMahieu going to be next year? What is Anthony Rizzo going to be next year? Like all of these guys are getting older and older and coming off of injuries or coming off of performances that leave you completely uninspired that they are ever going to be a productive player again. You've also got some some like the the few young players on this roster. Anthony Volpe, we all assume is going to be better next year, but frankly, he needs to be a lot better next year. Like he had moments this year, but that was it. He had moments. If he's going to be an everyday good starting shortstop, he needs to be a lot better next year, a lot more consistent. I mean, he's definitely poised for a big season I, next I year. I agree, right? he's poised, yeah. but 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 that's poised does not mean guaranteed to be better like there's nothing still, we still need to i know see you it. love guarantees but there's no such thing no but but I'm, all i'm saying is it we need to see it he needs to go and do it sure and then and then you've got jason dominguez who's going to be back at some point mid-season so uh, who knows what to expect out of that you still have so many holes on this roster you still <clears> have of urgency in the beginning of next season starting out of the gate hot it's never going to be more important you, you're you one you got to set a tone two you gotta you gotta prove that that you know, the, that things are different, that things that my are point is, even you if you out. come out urgent, you, you, you might not have the horses to be, to come out hot. You might not have the the players with the urgency to perform. Well, I you, mean, you, it's, it will see what they do obviously, but yes, but yes, they have to, that, but so but many, that, that, so that many leads pieces you, of this roster that... are set in stone though. So many pieces of this roster are set in stone unless they just eat massive dollars. <clears throat> They're not going to eat massive dollars in Stanton next year. They're they're not going to. The year after, if if he if he puts up another season like he did this year, they're they're going to be forced to do something at that point because you can't ride another one with that. But <clears throat> I do believe that they think that he's fixable. We we we've you're, you're reading articles about it. Uh, the the fact that uh, he's talk, coming out and talking about the fact that. He's just a couple tweaks away, just a couple couple things away. He, he understands that he needs to be that much better, but he believes he has really good baseball still in him. Well, if, if, if Stanton believes that he's a few tweaks away and he's been that way for the last, what, three years, two, two and a half years, then what confidence level do you have that those tweaks are, one, accurate, those are the actual you know mechanical changes, and two, that he can execute those changes because nothing he's shown is able to execute those changes. And there was a, a good you know, list article, all the list articles are coming out, T 10 things, five things, 19 things for the Yankees to focus on in the off season. And Kirshner uh, wrote one about, um, you know, specifically talking about Stanton and his lack of uh, being able to hit the fastball. And it goes deeper than that. Like the team is, is one of the worst fastball hitting teams uh, in, in the league. And when you see the, the teams that are hitting the fastball, well, I think the, the stat was seven of the, of the top 10 made the playoffs and Yankees were 14th. When you look at those numbers and when you see the fact that they can't hit a fastball, that is really uh, alarming for a lot of things. One, their bat speed is 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 not great, right? That that's one thing that and why do you have why do you have bat speed that's not great? Well, one, you're you're out of sync mechanically, and two, you're old. Mm -hmm. And and you can't get that back. When you're old, the bat speed just goes and, and just gets worse. Like that doesn't come back unless you get uh, enhancements from other places. But you you cannot get that back. So the fact that Stanton believes, and Stanton is a guy that is all upper body, chopping wood, like back bat speed. He's got to actually change his entire swing. In my, for for him to to stay in the league and be an effective player, I think he's got to make some serious mechanical changes. And I don't know if he can do that. I don't know if he's he's got the ability to do that because right now he is so upper body. Uh, and as he's as he's getting older, that's just going to get worse. It's going to get slower and worse. Um, and he's going to lose power eventually. And then it's going to look horrible. It's going to look horrible at some point, uh, even worse than it does, even worse than 187. Is that what it was? So if you, if you can't hit the fastball and he's been susceptible to the fastball for a long time, especially the, the elevated fastball, I'll, I'll never forget the Justin Verlander um, at bat in, uh, in the playoffs. This was like five years ago where, where he just went fastball, dime, 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 four or three fastballs, three straight, uh, three swings and misses. Can't touch it. Um, 
So that's a problem, and I don't think that's going to get better. Uh, but when you see the other guys, LeMahieu was was among the worst. Rizzo was among the worst. Let's go, let's take Rizzo out of that because obviously I, I agree. And yeah. and LeMahieu, I would love to see the second half stats on that to see what that looks like. But LeMahieu's not going to get better with uh with with how he's he's going to be able to catch up to a fastball. Again, man, like this is this is one of those things. Like as you're getting older, and 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 maybe this is more of the approach of what the Yankees need to do, and maybe this is a little bit of that Sean Casey. Um, that Sean Casey influence, which look, I don't hate it to be honest. Cause I, I think his philosophy, the way that he thinks about hitting, I agree with, and I like it. So, and he's a positive guy. Like a, he's, he's got all the things. I actually don't mind him staying around, but if the Yankees are coming out seeking fastballs and hunting fastballs, A-Rod made a career on it. There's a lot of hitters that made careers out of hunting fastballs, hunt the fastballs and then make adjustments off the fastball. <laughs> you, you can have a lot of success. And that's, that is what Aaron judge Aaron Judge is, does that has the ability to do that. His bat is in the in the zone for as I long mean, it's as never he is. been it's never been more evident that Aaron Judge is just is just a completely different level than the rest of this team. Yeah, it, it, it's it's so it's never been more alarming than it was this year. Even compared to last year when he hit sixty two, like no, no, this year highlighted even more. The guy comes back with a broken toe basically, and he's still leaps and bounds better than everyone else in that lineup. So as a team, the Yankees hit 247, 334, 441 against fastballs, just plain not good enough. And then if you break it down by player on the Yankees, so stack cast, we're looking at the stack cast numbers and they have on like four a, seam fastballs on four seam fastball. They have like a run value. So I'm sorting it by worst run value. Oswald Peraza, Jose Trevino, Ben Rortvet, Oswaldo Cabrera, Esteban Florial, DJ LeMahieu is sixth worst on the team. Glaber Torres, seventh worst on the team. I was surprised to see Glaber Torres that low, considering the pretty good offensive season that he had. Pereira, French Cordero, Anthony Rizzo is 10th. Um, and then, you know, everyone else is at least positive after that. Um, How do they get to run value, though? What is that? I knew you were going to ask that. I need to, I need to look. Uh, this, run is, this is where analytics loses me when I don't know what the hell they're talking about with run value. But if you look at, can, if you, can, look at just, uh, can you guys just pull the definition of run value? Let's, let's look at something else. Let's look at, um, you want to look, look at, at batting, batting average. average, batting average or slugging percentage. Both are, are pretty easy to understand. Uh, so batting average. Um, Cause you guys, see some unluckiness there. I think with, uh, with Glaber and DJ with compared to the run value. So uh, Anthony Volpe, 258 batting average against fastballs, 561 um, slugging. 561 slugging is very and his, good. Yeah, but his, yeah, exactly. His run value is nine. It's second, John Carlos second Stanton, on the team. John Carlos Stanton, 200 batting average against fastballs. Um, Overmatched. Oswald Peraza uh, batting 083 with negative seven run value. Rortvat overmatched. Jose Trevino overmatched under 200. Pereira overmatched. John Carlo overmatched. So you're you're seeing a lot of these guys that are that are overmatched on on fastballs and and that's a problem. And that's a real problem when you're when you're at <laughs> when you're at the major league level when you're able to dot a fastball. Especially now today's game every every pitcher is just like oh fastball. That's that's what I throw. I throw Especially fastballs. later in the games. Think about that. You have if you have a team that struggles against the fastball, okay, you maybe you better do some damage against that starting pitcher if it's not a one or two because the one or twos across the league now are throwing 98 miles per hour. But as soon as you get into the 5th, 6th, 7th, 8th, ninth, you have a specialist that probably comes in and throws 100. So yeah. You're in trouble if a if a guy can locate a fastball uh, looking, with this it, team, and it makes at, a lot of sense to see why this team struggled so mightily because of that. You you have so you have you have just you endless amount a parade of people who can throw in the high nineties, <laughs> and and this team struggles all time this year. You and and it's very clear. You know what the scary thing about Stanton like. We, you would always say, "How do you get Stanton out?" Lowing away sliders, he's just he's just gonna flail at them and not not even come close. And then you look at his numbers against fastballs, and he had a thirty three point eight percent whiff percentage and a thirty five point three percent strikeout percentage. So it's like, dude, you can't fastball up in the zone. You can't he can't hit the ball. Can't touch a fastball up in the zone or inside, and can't touch. You can't lay off a slider on the outside corner of the plate. It's just complete non competitive at bats. And it's because of his mechanic. It's because he's he's all arms. He's all upper body. It's he can't he can't catch up to it. It's basically He's not in position to catch up to it. If the pitcher makes a mistake, he will still hit it very hard. Yes. So when you look at his stat cast numbers, like, oh, 111 off the bat, John Carlos Stanton, what an animal. It's like, okay, well, he hits the ball once a week. So, so what's the point? Yeah, he's become Joey Gallo.
run value definition. Joey Gallo was was and Kershaw no Kershaw made that comparison in his article. It's a he's he's John Carlos Stanton is is uh, is giving you Joey Gallo production, and he's right. But can't even play the outfield. Joey Gallo at least played an okay outfield. That's true. Run value definition. And first base now. The run impact of an event based on the runners on base, outs, ball, and strike count. Okay, it's. I mean, think of it like the war of an at-bat. I don't know. Just like, did you do something productive or something negative with it with that pitch? The, Im- um, the run impact of an event based on the runners on base, yeah. out. So there's circumstance that goes in. Yeah, there. there's circumstance. And that's why, that that's why Volpe's number is so high because you see him high leverage, in high-leverage situations per, with, with production. So that, again, like that's a number – to me that that really bodes well for for what his future can be yep um so some other uh, team offensive ranks so this is the third so worst quick, batting just, average of any Yankees sean casey. team in history they hit 227 the worst was 1968 214 and then 1967 225 so that 67 68 team sucked ass and then this uh 2023 team sucks ass eighth worst on base percentage 11th worst in total hits uh, third most in strikeouts, and we already talked about the fastball numbers. So, just can't this team can't hit this team could not this team has not hit since July of last year, and I don't know how that changes if you bring back a large the large majority of the position players. Like this team, this team is still going to struggle offensively next year if we're looking at more or less the same position players because I don't expect them all to just suddenly get better overnight. Well, the, the, you know, one thing that approach does that you can you can definitely uh, change an approach in an off season and spring training. Like if you have guys, look at Glaber, man. L- Glaber Glaber is a tale of different. But seasons. we talked about basically, but th- at the end of the day, Glaber's numbers this year and last year almost identical. It, it, it watching it, it was better this year. I I a hundred percent agree with that. But it's not like he went from a. 10% above league average offensive player last year to a 30% this year. No, he was basically the same level of production. It's just last year he had larger swings up and down. I'll take the consistency all day. But that's that's exactly it. The, the consistency is is a is a is an important factor here. If it, you're if you're it, able to be consistent, then you, your overall numbers as a team are going to look much but better. But if your second best hitter is a little bit better than league average, you're not a good offense. My, here's my point. Is that if you have if you have consistent change throughout and and you're able to be more consistent and have better at bats, it, it's just going to look and feel different. I don't believe that you have more than one person doing that. Then you're gonna you're gonna have you know similar numbers. You're gonna have the numbers are gonna look better across. Okay, the board. so they go from a bottom five offense in the league to what a, I, a middle is, a, a, a middle of the pack offense in the here's league. Here's my point: approach can affect change. It can affect change. You can you can you can be better in a year. If you have the major league talent that they have, like approach has changed some of these guys uh, in a negative way, I think. So again, Cam Mabin, bring him back, man, bring him in the building. But like that, that is something that is very real being able to, again, and mindset going up approach to the at bat, hunting fastballs, hunting fastballs, being ready and working off of fastball. It changes your mindset. It can absolutely change this team for the better. I'm not saying that it's going to fix the team at all. They need, they need, they need some new players and, and different uh, different blood in there, but it is something that can that can help affect change. Like I do think this is one of the worst years you could possibly have offensively, and there's nowhere to go but up at this point. So bringing in a new approach can affect that. You want okay. to look at glass half that's full. The, that's the mentality. You can't be worse next year. Great. That's that's what we all have to look forward to next season. But Jesus. there's a the the ability for the ability to change. Like I don't think you can. People are stuck in a way and can't mm. change. Stanton's a different story in the sense that he's getting older and. Mechanically, he's just different. LeMahieu also, like, he looked much better in the second half of the season. But he's also getting older. Yeah, but LeMahieu has the type of swing. I've said this in the past that that he can can play until he's, you know, in his his late 30s. He's got that type of swing. Let's see. If he's healthy. And Rizzo, if he's healthy. Like, I I take the Rizzo fastball numbers. I'm kind of throwing them out for the same reason in our grades episode. We gave him an incomplete because, yeah – he looked bad against everything after the after the concussion play. Um, I'm sure if we could isolate the numbers in the first month of the season, then Rizzo would have looked a lot better. But yeah, um, 
got a few more things to talk about from the final weekend. But first, Game Time, which is our preferred ticketing app because it is the easiest way to buy tickets to anything you want to go to. Sporting events, concerts, comedy shows, theater, and much more. Maybe you want to see an NFL game. we got basketball coming up soon. Also, a lot of great comedy, especially in, the New York, in New York City. You can get tickets on Game Time. The app has so many cool features and is easy to use. It shows you trending tickets, what sections the best deals are in. It calls out cheap options and flash deals and much more so you can make an informed purchase. They also have event cancellation protection so you can buy with confidence. I love the app because you get great images of your seats from real humans, not digitally created images, images as you are buying. The buying process is super fast. Two taps and you're done. Then the tickets go directly to your phone so you don't have to dig through your emails or whatever to find them. Snag tickets today without stress using game time. For $20 off your first purchase, use code BRONX after you download the app and create an account. Once again, download the app, create an account, use code BRONX for $20 off your first purchase. Carlos Rodon just went out with a bang. He's like, you know what? First year in pinstripes. Let me let let me really leave my lasting mark on this 2023 season. Couldn't get an out in his final start of the season. His ERA, which was below six for for a little while, ballooned back up to 6.85, almost seven, almost a seven ERA, almost got there. But really, the thing that is most annoying that it really earned the S for shithead is that when Matt uh, Matt Blake went out to talk to him on the mound. Rodon just completely blew him off, turned his back like, uh, this guy's not important. I don't have time for this. Just no composure on the mound, no respect on the mound, nothing. Just a complete a-hole. Yeah, man, like way to way to end the year with a with a bang. Uh, and it was it was much of the same that we had seen all year. The guy, the guy's clearly a hothead, and and it's not it's not a good thing when there's struggles. <laughs> You know, maybe maybe it's it's something that he can harness when he's actually pitching well, and it can be a positive thing at that point. But when the when the wheels are coming off, and and you know, even even when you have three really good innings, and then all of a sudden you get into some trouble in the fourth inning, are the wheels going to come off? Like that's that's what I'm thinking now. Uh, yeah, you can use that and and be fiery, but it looks it looks stupid when uh, when you're when you're doing and acting like a child. And he's done it a number of times already. Like a number. That's of the times. scary thing. It's it's the. This is one, one thing, incident. One thing that you need to have when you're especially a free agent, big free agent that comes to New York, you need composure. You need, need to be able to handle criticism and pressure because if you can't, the pressure is going to eat you alive. And it's just one season and it was an injury season mostly for Radon, but he has not been able to keep his composure. And that has me most worried even more than the, Oh, is he only a two pitch pitcher? Is he an injury prone guy? Like he might just not be able to handle New York. And how many on the list of signings and trades would that be for Brian Cashman now of guys that on paper look great. And then you get them there and just can't handle playing in New York. Like this is now a pattern of Brian Cashman bringing in guys that seemingly cannot handle New York. Yeah, I mean, I, I I put a tweet out after I saw his stat line because I, I uh, admittedly didn't watch the first inning of that game. Um, Sonny Gray looked like you know Sandy Koufax, and, and I've never even seen Sandy Koufax pitch. But that's the line when you're when you're comparing someone to uh, a, an all time great co- with uh, with with another guy on the on the line there. I mean, it looks it looks so bad. It looks so bad, and the fact that he ended the season like that. Uh, that's the last taste in the mouth for everybody. Uh, and this guy, he's like, you know what? I just got to go away for a bit. I'm going to, I'm going to, I'm not going to go back to my family. I'm just going to go for a week and just, you know, think about other things, not baseball related. I'm glad you have that luxury, pal. Uh, shave the mustache, do that first. That's the first thing you need to do um, and, and see what that looks like. And then, and then, yeah, re- readjust and reassess how you, how you're mentally approaching uh, your, your game here, because it's a problem. It's a true problem. He needs a mental trying- coach along with how many mental, co- how many times have we asked for, for a sports psychologist to intervene? I don't even know well, if it's possible. We've asked like, do your due diligence, ask people who have been around that player you're about to acquire. Do you, what's, what's their psyche? Can they handle New York? Because remember when we talked to that reporter from Oakland, uh, I forget her name, but she was basically mm-hmm. like a- anyone any reporter in Oakland could have told the Yankees, Sonny Gray is not going to be able to handle New York. And it would not surprise me if we found someone from the White Sox or someone from, 
from the Giants, they would tell us something similar about Carlos Rodon. I've, Giants fans have tweeted about this. It, it's definitely there. Uh, ask, ask Tyler Chin. Tyler Chin mentioned something about this, actually. He, he hit us both about it. He works at Blue Wire. There, there's definitely rumblings about him. Like he's, this is not his first, this is not his first uh, outlash of being an asshole. I mean, so I was, asshole. I was trying to think of like, it, this has got to be the most disastrous start to a free agent career of any Yankee in history. And I, I was, the only thing I was comparing it to was Carl Pavano because Carl Pavano, if you remember, it got off to an immediately bad start when he thought his contract was for 40 million, but it was actually for 39 and a half million. And that was a problem in and of itself because Carl Pavano was a baby like that. So like that upset him from the get-go. And then Carl Pavano in 2005, I mean, Carl Pavano, his 2005 numbers, they look like Cy Young caliber compared to what Carlos Rodon just put up. Carl Pavano threw a hundred innings and had a 4.77 ERA. I would have taken that any day of the week from Carlos Rodon this year. Two versus, runs a game. Versus the uh, 6.85 ERA. And then uh, the guys in the notes here put something funny. Somehow, Frankie Montas finished 2023 with a better war than Carlos Rodon. Frankie Montas, who we saw, actually was positive value for the Yankees this year. 0.1 war versus negative 0.8. For, for Carlos Rodon. Yeah, I mean, so did everybody that didn't throw a, a pitch in, in New York. Yeah, we that's all just, it's just better. funny. It's just funny. Let me have, the, let me enjoy that. Okay, let me enjoy that. It's, it's, you don't have to explain why. The fact that they I understand. Mon- I understand. The fact understand. that they let Frankie Montas pitch again is ridiculous. Yes, it's ridiculous. And you know what? I'm very much convinced we're seeing Frankie Montas back in a Yankees uniform. I, yeah, I mean, if it's, if there's an incentive laden deal, it doesn't cost a lot. It's sure. Sure. Run it back. Let's, let's let's hope and pray that he's let good Brian next Cashman year. try to get get something there. Yeah, I mean, it's clearly he's going to try to get a. I told you so. See, but you agree this is the most disastrous first year of a free agent contract, P- perhaps in history, not just Yankees history. Yeah, it's bad. It's 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 up there with. It feels the it feels terrible. The the, the thing is, is like if he did this on a team that was doing well, it, I feel like it would feel worse. But the the fact that the whole team was a dumpster fire. Makes it feel like, oh, okay, it's, he's just like part of the gang. He's part of the gang. He's just like doing the thing. That's a good point. Everybody else is. So it doesn't. It actually doesn't feel as bad because he's not. He hasn't taken a dump on like a high leverage situation because he hasn't been in any because the team's been bad. Let's imagine a situation where the Yankees <clears throat> played well enough in August to where they snuck into like the last wild card spot right now. Carlos Rodon doesn't make the postseason roster, right? I mean, he's, he would, no, he would. Would he make a it, start? Probably. That is terrifying. Yeah. Think, because probably, they would, they would, they would probably be forced into having him make a start because he's yeah. making 28 million bucks a year. But he would, he would absolutely start a game and he would you know go he out would. there and he would get his brains blasted in, in two and a third innings. I mean, it and so that so, you're so right. Yes. That would have felt a lot worse, but. Yeah. We, oh man, I know the exact conversation we would be having. Do you put him out there and start him because you have to, or do you not start him and risk completely disintegrating him mentally because you're not giving him a playoff start or even worse, not putting him on the playoff roster when he's a, the biggest free agent signing in the off season. Oh my God. We would have I mean, done four Brian, episodes. He, we would have done four episodes on that. Brian Cashman's like, thank God we didn't make the playoffs <laughs> because yeah. this would have looked that much worse. If we got bounced in the first round of the playoffs and had to do had to roll out that or not roll him out, you know you you can't look at me and 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 talk about the money that I spent in the off season and and, and tell it how it affected the team in a positive way at all. So yeah, it it, it actually would have been magnified to a point where it would have looked and felt worse. So yeah, that's a good call. You're saying that it's the worst, but it, it to me it doesn't feel like the worst. Because the team sucked, but if the team was good, it definitely would have felt a lot worse. That's a great call by you. Yeah, yeah. <laughs> Sonny Gray still hurts more to me, to be honest. Because you were relying on him to actually contribute. Yeah, it, to a good team. Like yeah. there was a world in which if Sonny Gray pitched like he's been pitching since he left the Yankees, the Yankees maybe actually win something in 2018 or 2019. Favorites to win the World Series if he's the number two guy, that, like the true number two guy, a one A. Yeah. Oh yeah. So yes. And and uh, like going into the season, that was a similar feeling th- to what we had. But then Tommy Tough Guy went out there and just threw the ball too hard. His mustache was too heavy, and he was on the IL for the beginning. So we didn't even get the f- we didn't even get that in the beginning of the season. You know, it's like it's a lot of just like okay, what do you? Why are you here? You're not even 
why are you here? And then all of a sudden the team is tanking and is terrible. So it doesn't feel as bad. Michael King's last start was not great, but at, overall as a starter, eight games, 38 and a third innings, 33 hits, 1.88 ERA. Really uh, just, I think, uh, he just at got the engaged. very least. He just got him... engaged to read, like I saw an Instagram post or something. Yeah, but, but Did I well think. for himself. But, but I think the, the, uh, the last, the, uh, I wonder if my sister will be invited. The, uh, the <laughs> last, <laughs> how do I get on this invite list? I don't think she'll be invited, but one of her good friends will definitely be invited. Um, definitely put himself uh, in clear contention for the, not contention, but I think, you know, all but guaranteed him a, a, a rotation spot for next year. I feel like there's a possible way for you to weasel yourself into a plus one here. <laughs> you know, <laughs> I don't think so. <laughs> uh, I think that would be a tough swing for me. Um, all right. So last episode, we did grades for everybody and we put out the graphic on social media and got a, a couple good comments that we want to go through some people that disagreed with some of our grades. So well, way way too many people agreed. I guess when you, when you're this bad too, it's like, you know, there, there usually it's just everybody shits on it. And, uh, and this time there were a solid amount of people that were like, oh yeah, it's a, pretty fair and accurate. So first one, so appreciate that. Alvaro, Alvariga O2 said, I mean, Herman throws a perfect game that deserves a D, LOL. Yeah. Domingo I mean, Herman yes. could have thrown seven perfect games this year. <laughs> I'm not giving him anything above an F. Yeah, it's it was more of a a, a, a grade because he, he deserved it than uh, the, the perfect game. He got That's expelled. Fine. He got expelled from school. So sorry, you, you don't get you don't get a D. Yeah, D's it doesn't matter get, what you do. You could have straight A's. D's get a degree. So no, Domingo does not get a degree for getting right. expelled from school. It's a good analogy. It's a good analogy. Shaq underscore Kobe underscore one says, I think Judge should have gotten a B. He did so much worse than last year when he did play, which is not true. Higgy did great things this year. Really? Most catchers aren't home run hitters, but he got a good number and was also great behind the plate. I don't think Shaq underscore Kobe understands baseball very well. It's fine. Like, you know, Higgy is did what he normally does, to be honest. Like he's just he's a, what he's we a give backup him? catcher. Did we he's give a him back... a C? Yeah. Yeah, it's exactly what he does. He's a C he's a C guy. It's and fine. Judge, like we talked about in the grades episode. I mean, anything's going to look, look worse than 62 home runs American League record last year. But when you look at his actual numbers when he was on the field, he was not as good as last year, but he was pretty damn close. And if he played a, almost a full season, he would have hit 50 home runs. So that's not 62. I get it. But 50 home runs is still a great pace for him. And he went through struggles that I think are directly tied to his injury. So I, I think if that injury does not happen, which – and if I'm saying this, I think is a fluke injury. Judge has been an injury. The guy ran into a cement little slab in a wall, saving a game. Okay. If that does not happen, he's probably hitting 55 home runs with a 300 batting average and a 415 yeah. on base percentage. And we're all, and he's in the contention for MVP category. So no, he's not getting a B. Yeah. He's a, he's a, he's definitely an A guy. All right. I'll get the next one. Um, actually, do you want me to keep going? Cause you don't know where we are. No, I do know where we are, but the, it's like, everybody's asking for an A plus for Cole. We just didn't give out A pluses. That's so that's, that's all that is. Uh, Shelby three, four, five, seven, nicely done, but you were too generous with LeMahieu and Calhoun McKinney. Jerry's out on, on the kids, but unfortunately I haven't been impressed with any of them uh, that have played more than a couple of weeks. So Calhoun and McKinney, like those aren't kids. <laughs> no, no, no. She's talking about the kids uh, okay. outside of them. Um, Jerry, so I totally agree with that. I think uh, Volpe obviously was uh, there for the full year, so in a position to to do well. Um, but the guys that stepped in, the, the guys that stepped in and did their job when they weren't supposed to, it's hard to it's hard to look at them and say you know that they that they didn't do a, an admirable job because I think they did. So Frankie underscore sandwiches says that we forgot Frankie Montes. So I don't know, a minus. Yeah, how many innings did he pitch? Like two. Did well, right? Like positive. Good job. I, th I think I found really I came think... back. He was going to be regular. He was going to be ready for the playoffs for us again. <laughs> Frankie Montes would have got a playoff. He's just start. a playoff guy. He was just a playoff guy. <laughs> That's so, why we brought him in really just for the playoffs. I think I found my dad's burner account. Ayam 13. This team will never be in the world series again. No one plays to win and from the heart. 
There are too many good teams and players who really play to win, and that's not the Yankees. Some Yankees players at the end of the season woke up, but not enough to be able to at least be in the wild card. The team and the team and I mean the whole team, they are they, they are, are and they, they are played horrible horribly. and they played horrible. Yeah. That's yeah. my dad's burner. Yeah. <laughs> Austin underscore double underscore uh Stinson. Bader gets an F despite doing exactly what he's done since he debuted with the Cardinals. Our expect expectations for him were way too high and skewed by Monty season. So I think what he's saying is we were too hard on Bader giving him an F because he did exactly what he did with the Cardinals. And that is false. If you go look with the Cardinals, he was a 99 OPS plus hitter. Call it league average, 1% worse. With the Yankees this year, he was 75, 25% worse than league average. That's a big difference. Neither is good, but that's a big difference. Um, Brendan Raider, a writer, Raider 88 says that his, uh, RS for shithead on Rodon was his favorite. And then jam underscore Pearl says JD gets a, a quote SD interpret that in a few ways, super douche or sucks dot, dot, dot. You get the picture. <laughs> yeah. Uh, so yeah, pretty, pretty much, uh, I, I think relatively fair. Are there, is there some room? Sure. There's some interpretation room there. Um, but. I think relatively, uh, it, 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 it didn't feel like it was that difficult to grade these guys this year, to be honest. Uh, no, cause they all sucked. All right. Last but not least, we're going to spend a couple of minutes revisiting our bold predictions. So I think it'll be fun if I read yours and speaking then you of, read mine. Speaking of things that suck. So Scott's first bold prediction, Oswaldo takes the starting left field job by May 1st, playing, uh, playing his way, paving the way for a 2020 season. Oswaldo Cabrera ended up playing 51 games in left field and was the worst hitter on the Yankees. How many home runs did he hit? Five. Five home runs. So multiply 50 by how many at bats should he have gotten? <laughs> yeah. So it would have been a 2020 guy if he just listened to me and stuck him out there every day. Got it. Okay. Yeah. Just volume your Common way to Common sense department here. Hello. Volume your way to 2020. Yeah. That's, that's, what, that's what a season does. <laughs> Andrew, <laughs> that's what a An season does. Anthony it Volpe knows that well. To more statistics. Okay, so number two, your prediction on Clark Schmidt was that his cutter leads the way to a breakout season with a yeah. 3.2 ERA and 15 wins. You love that wins because you also said that for Jameson Tyone. It's just something I can call out. So the May and June, pretty oh, spot if the, on. If, if that was just his entire season. Well, when I saw – when the first month was tough on that on that bull prediction, to be honest. It was very tough. And then May and June, I'm like, oh, okay, here we are. It's like that that meme of the girl like doing the – doing the uh, maybe, maybe this is going to work. And and then the, the wheels fall off again. The wheels didn't fall off. He just became, you know, very mediocre again. But as Logan said beforehand, I was right because the premise is there. Like he had a better year. And how many wins did he have? Nine. Nine. I, Not I do, that that matters. What do you think Clark Schmidt's ceiling is? He's a, I mean, I, I, th when you see what, what he did in June and July, you see what he can be. That's a sustained amount. That's a, mm, that's, that's a no. decent amount. Of, uh, you could find a decent most amount of time. Any pitcher that has been he's probably in a, in a four ERA guy. Like he's probably a that's four his ceiling. Absolute top, ceiling is a four ERA guy. Four ERA guy because he's he, never going to be consistent enough to be a, a three point two ERA guy. Like he well, was he doesn't in, get deep enough in games June either for that. Yeah, because if he did, he would get deeper into games if he was that guy. And so there. you could find any pitcher who's in a starting rotation that has a month or two months that looks really really good, and you're like, wow, this well, what's with this guy? But the reason you have number four and five starters is because those guys are never consistent enough. And I think that's what Clark Schmidt's ceiling is, which is not like, you know, whatever. If you, if you, if he's a reliable number five starter, okay, great. That's just, I think probably a disappointment for where he was drafted and his prospect status coming through the system, but wouldn't be shocking for how the Yankees prospects have panned out. Cause they have not panned out. they seem to be always overhyped and overvalued. You talk about consistency and that's his biggest issue is, is, uh, is being able to throw the ball where he wants to throw the ball or where the catcher wants to throw the ball. And that's when he gets into a big trouble is when he's missing the glove. And unfortunately he misses the glove more times than not. And, and that's, that's where he needs to clean up. If he's able to be more accurate, if he's able to be a guy that can throw the ball where he wants it to go, uh, he's got the stuff to be an effective starting pitcher. It's a matter of being able to execute those pitches and at a consistent level and, and repeat and repeat and repeat and repeat. 
Um, and that's where he's, that's where he's fallen out of. So guys have made that change where they're getting to a, a more repeatable mechanics. And this is where his off season work and you know, who he's, who he's working with is extremely important because he does have the ability and the talent to be a, an effective starting pitcher. It's all about the consistency. So you're right with that. It's, but, but drill it down to consistency of, of the mechanics and, and his delivery. Cause if he can, if he can harness that, then the results will be there. So many ifs with this team. Your number three was that Hicks is going to be DFA'd after the all-star break and Dominguez called up to replace Hicks. I mean, you weren't that far wrong. Hicks was DFA'd and Dominguez did come up. They just didn't coincide with one another. Hicks was DFA'd on oh, May 20th coincided. and Dominguez was a September call up. This was, this was uh, the most bold prediction that actually came true. This was like the only, the one that I was like, yeah, yeah. actually I had a good feeling about Dominguez. I'm not going to lie. I did. Uh, I thought it was a stretch that they would actually bring him up though, but you know, I think as the season went on that, that it became easier for them to do that because of the way that the season was going. I, I can't figure you out on Carlos Rodon because we made these bold predictions at the end of spring training. So Carlos yeah. Rodon had already gone down with an injury and you had already criticized him. And it's like, you keep flip-flopping on this guy. Cause your bold prediction here was that Rodon returns healthy. This was before he went down pitches. T- no, it wasn't. There's he no went way down. I made this after he went down. Then why'd you say returns healthy? We oh, made these bold. Pr- okay. You made this, but we made the bold predictions well, is- like the day before the season started, and he got injured yeah, yeah, in the yeah, beginning yeah, yeah, of spring. Yeah, yeah. Okay, so you said well, he returns healthy, reason, pitches to a sub three ERA, and starts game one in the playoffs. You thought he was. <laughs> <You> thought- <laughs> I mean. If Brian Cashman, if he did what Brian Cashman paid him to do. But you thought he be... was going to get a, a, a number one start over Garrett Cole? Yeah. yeah well, <laughs> that, this was where my confidence level with home run Cole at the beginning of the year. Or did Garrett Cole have to pitch on the final day of the season to get them into the playoffs? Well, that was, that was part of the conversation. If you remember the conversation too, that was part of it. But yes. Um, hey, look, I, I fully admit that, 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 uh, that Garrett Cole cleaned up a lot of the things that, that, drove me nuts about him but um, but your number five prediction yeah which is the yankees win 105 games and yeah. end up beating the beating the the uh world series against st louis beating houston in the alcs and then beating uh getting off the schneid st. Yeah, louis exercising the demons against the st. world louis, series. so right. but like 105 games the yankees yeah. clearly would win the division so they're not playing for their playoff lives unless check so, st louis's record too if you but, want no to but also so worse. carlos rodone like in your in your scenario here he just outpitched garrett cole this season and that's why he's getting the playoff start in game well if he did then we would have won a lot more games and and yeah that was the problem is is that carlos owns an asshole and didn't do any of that and really you know affected uh how how this was gonna go and so yeah houston will probably be back in the alcs because they have balls uh the yankees not in the playoffs st louis not the disastrous play. season in St. Louis. That, I mean, there's no no excuse for that. To be honest, like that, the talent, they have so much talent on that team. It's insane how they how they were as bad as they were. Um, look, there's a there's a lot of things that were wrong with that. <laughs> no, but you'd like I'll, I'll definitely give you credit for the Hicks DFA and, and I'm and, the, and I'm the glass Dominguez half full call guy, So I got a I got a yep. I'm pick I pick a World Series I think every year. <laughs> yes, you do. <laughs> <laughs> All right, let's look at your butt pile of shit. <laughs> um, okay, number one, Volpe hit 82 points lower than predicted 209. Yeah, yeah. so I predicted him to – the. you got to read the graphic. So I predicted him to be the first Oh, this is the um, – my bad. I'm reading the – I'm reading – I was like, damn, that was pretty spot on. Um, Andrew <laughs> – Number one, Volpe will be first shortstop to win Rookie of the Year since Correa in 2015, batting 291 with 171 hits. <clears throat> so yeah, first of all, there were there were uh, there was another shortstop in um, Baltimore that mm. is is going to be taking the crown for better shortstop in the league. Uh, the the kid uh, Corbin on the other side and the national league was like had a ridiculous season too. So two shortstops. Yeah, rookies. no, Volpe Volpe Inca. Ain't, he did not uh, do enough to. It's not that bad though. That I mean, I still think Volpe, you know, came out and he, he needs to be better, but it wasn't that egregious. Uh, number two, D- DJ LeMay, who reclaims crown as AL batting champ with a 331 batting average. Well, that was pretty wrong. That was that pretty, was pretty wrong. And I was trying to yeah. think, like, I was looking at his second half numbers. I'm like, oh, like maybe in the second half he hit really like, 270. Hit, like, 270. Yeah. <laughs> he hit 270 in the second half. So not even close. Yeah. Okay. Uh, here's the best one. 
Um, Stanton will play 73 games in the outfield for the first time in his Yankees career. Mm -hmm. How many did he play in the outfield? 33. I, I don't, 33. I'm surprised I didn't add in here and also hit 45 home runs or something like that. Yeah, you were Stanton. implying that though. I feel like that was implied. You, you were implying a very good season out of John Carlos Stanton. So that does go into this. Yeah. So, uh, Stanton sucks and I, I don't think he's ever going to be good again. Yeah. That's a shame. Uh, number four, early season trade Glaber Torres to Milwaukee for Adrian Hauser. Uh, that didn't happen. And despite <laughs> no. you, he became the most consistent Yankees batter uh, on the team. Well, no, Aaron Judge was still better. More well, consistent. you know, well, he was played more games and throughout the full year, he was the most consistent. Yeah, I, this is just, um, I, like I told you guys before we started recording, I legitimately had a dream earlier this week about Glaber Torres getting traded and me excited, so excited about it that I texted, was like in my dream texting my dad about how the Yankees finally traded Glaber Torres. I don't think it's going to happen. I just hope and pray they don't give him a contract after this season. Next season. And then number five is late September series against Toronto will determine the AL East. Uh, and no, that didn't, it didn't do that. It nope. didn't even Toronto squeaked into the playoffs. Um, they're good at squeaking into the playoffs. Uh, the Yankees did not squeak into anything. No. Well, they squeaked into fourth place. So yeah, uh, pretty disastrous all around. Uh, yeah. Yeah. Pretty disastrous all around. And that's what happens when you have an absolutely. But it's also season. not fun. Like spoiler for the next bold predictions. We're not going to sit here and be like, my bold prediction is the Yankees win 82 games. My bold prediction is that uh, Carlos Rodon is a 70 R eight. Like that would be bold, I guess, but like, it's not fun to boldly there's, predict guys. With our, to with our bold predictions, like, there's, there's always been, you know, positivity. Maybe, maybe I'll change. It's like the last chance for positivity. Maybe you need to go the other way. You know, maybe you need to well, go the other way. You know and just why? Be so negative from the beginning that it that it flips it flips the script. So if you're positive in your bold predictions and then mm -hmm. negative things happen, like okay, whatever, it didn't materialize. But if you go negative and then that thing that you predicted to be negative is positive, the you know the shit you get is magnified because of yeah. That. But it's worth it because the, then things are happening that are good. Yeah. So you can. And just I'm not on social media Sacrificing anymore, yourself so. is fine. Okay. Well, that's going to wrap up today's episode. We're in off season mode. So once a week, sad. Hopefully Tuesday next time, feels like Tuesday mornings feel like a good day. Hopefully next time we record, we will have information about a press conference, but, but yeah, like and I that said, may I think the schedule for next week, like if we get news that the press conference is going to be next Tuesday, then we'll record after that on Wednesday yeah. or something yeah. like that. Um, so just keep, you know, keep that in mind. Thank you guys for listening. Go check out game time. If you want to uh, get some tickets to something and we'll talk to you guys next week.